student saw it important that all ANS students recognize and become aware of their mental health and how they can know more about it. Hello everybody, my name is Regina Franco and I'm here to present to you my capstone project titled Mental Health Literacy and my two core values in this project are self, respect for self and others and intellectual curiosity. So the interest that I had for this project or the problem, but more than anything it's an interest, it was encouraging students to navigate, understand and cope with their mental health. Uh, and the, it relates to the core values and essential skills because it comes from a place of personal intellectual curiosity, so mental health is something that I'm very passionate about, that I'm very interested in, that I think is an aspect of everyone's lives that they should be taken care of. Um, and it's certainly respect for self and others because it's about maintaining your own positive mental health, but also helping others and being able to help others and identify if their mental health may be um, flailing. And then essential skills, I will, I have been doing a lot of research for this project, so I certainly needed to um, have information literacy, be able to read sources and to synthesize them, being able to communicate a message. So through my guide, I hope to be able to encourage students to take care of their health. And obviously, I'm sure with all projects, we need to foster time management, be more organized and be able to uh, just meet the deadlines. So here are some statistics that help back up my point as to why this is important, especially now more than ever. Uh, according to the Mental Health Foundation and the World Health Organization, 20% of adolescents experience a mental health problem any given year, and 50% of all mental illnesses begin by the age of 14, and 75% by mid-20s. So, um, as we can see, adolescents really experience mental health issues. Uh, it's really pre prevalent among teenagers, so it's important to tackle. Furthermore, according to UNICEF in 2019, self-harm is one of the top five leading causes of death among adolescents. And as we know, self-harm is a byproduct of a poor mental health or even a mental health disorder or a mental disorder. And depression is one of the leading causes of disability. This is globally. And again, there's very limited data on adolescent mental health in low and middle income countries, which I thought was something that was very interesting because Nicaragua is a low or middle income country uh, and I think it is very true that for Latin American countries uh, there is very limited research on it, there's very very limited um, resources on them so it's something that is very important for us to tackle here in Nicaragua which is a country that doesn't have a lot of mental health resources. So my product proposal is to create a mental health guide uh, aimed for middle and high school students for the purpose of helping them understand and explore their mental health, be able to identify the, dis the signs of declining mental health, not only within themselves, but also within others, and learn to cope uh, with emotional distress and learn different coping mechanisms. That way they can help themselves if they are dealing with certain issues and encourage them to feel safe reaching out for help, not only to like their parents, but also to school staff and to especially our school counselors who are there to help us. And overall, I hope that this will be able to foster, help them foster and maintain a positive mental health. So this has been my progress from late March to early April. I So previously in early March and throughout the second semester, I had just a really vague, messy idea of what I wanted to do. But after the presentations, I decided on a final decision on what I wanted to do, which was creating the guide. I emailed Ms. Adriana for approval and I started to do a lot of research on different definitions and the part that I did the most extensive research on was different coping mechanisms and how to deal with emotional distress. So initially, as you can see in the email, my plan was to do a five part guide. So defining mental health, defining mental illness, signs to identify deteriorating mental health, how to cope with emotional stress and seeking support. However, Ms. Adriana told me to add certain things. So I will get to that in the final product. So for late April and early May, I did a lot more research. I completed the final draft. I emailed Ms. Arena the final draft and she gave me feedback. Some things that she said was um, just clearing up some words or some sentences or some parts that were a little bit unclear. Um, she uh, encouraged me to get rid of a section that was a bit confusing. And I think um, without her guidance, I would have left it in. But looking back on it, I think it was rather confusing. So I got rid of it. Um, and she told me to add pictures because I didn't have any pictures and so that was certainly um, a good 
pointer because it makes it a lot more interesting to read with pictures. So I implemented that feedback and I had the final product. So the final product is what is called Student Mental Health Guide Helping Students Maintain a Positive Mental Health. Instead of being split into five parts, it's split into six parts. There is first an introduction, and then the first three parts are defining mental health. So what is mental health and what does that imply? Defining mental illness, what is mental illness and what does that imply? And comparing the two. So the main takeaway from this is understanding that everybody has a degree of mental health, but not everybody has a mental illness. And that even though the two are very independent from each other, they can go hand in hand. So someone who doesn't have a mental illness at all can still be very mentally unhealthy. Whereas someone who does have a mental illness and they keep it under control, or not that they keep it under control, but they are able to cope with it and manage it better, they can be very mentally healthy. So although they're independent, they can still go hand in hand. Secondly, uh, this is the second part, or well, the last three parts, but the second section, um, knowing signs to identify whether you or someone else is having a decline in mental health. So what are the most common signs, especially among adolescents, because when I was researching, there was a lot of signs that didn't really apply to uh, school age students. So um, knowing signs, knowing to recognize signs within yourself and within others to identify when it's time to reach out for help for your mental health problems. And also how to cope with emotional distress. This is a part that Ms. Adriana encouraged me to also include how to cope with academic stress. And I think that was a really important part that she guided me to include because obviously as students, we struggle with academic stress and the academic workload uh, rather heavily. And I'm sure I'm not the only one to say that that is certainly a large source of stress for many of us. So um, ways that you yourself can help yourself to deal with emotional stress that is may or may not be uh, separate from school stress and then how to deal with academic stress, how to make it so that the workload isn't so overwhelming, how to organize yourself and, you know, just how to deal with the emotional distress that you deal, that you experience through school and also apart from school. And lastly, seeking support. So um, encouraging students to reach out for help with their parents, with trusted friends, but more than anything with um, authority figures or older uh, adults who are going to help them, uh, guide them to get better with their mental health. But also, more importantly, reaching for help within the school. Obviously, our school is equipped with really um, talented and very experienced mental health professionals with counselors that um, are there to help us. So encouraging them to seek for help within the school and also if they feel it necessary, reaching out for help and considering getting outside help, so a therapist or a psychiatrist or someone that's going to help them tackle their mental health issues in a different way than a parent can do. So um, why is this important to the ANS community? This guide is essentially an accessible means of students for students to navigate their mental health. I think it can sometimes be daunting for students to go and reach out for help, um, but if they have a written guide that they can just read through, it will you know, make it so they can have the language and they can have the tools necessary to express themselves and deal with their mental health problems, but also, of course, to encourage them to reach out for help. They can, through this uh, guide, identify signs of concern, uh, signs that they can identify within themselves or within others to prevent people from um, falling into, you know, a very deep depression or falling into a lot of mental health problems that makes it harder to come back from in the long run. And then uh, also learning coping mechanisms that they can use within themselves, the ways that they can help themselves, and ultimately encouraging, encouraging students to seek for help outside. So not only within themselves, but also uh, seeking it through school, through their parents, through outside professionals, etc. So overall, helping them be able to maintain and foster a positive mental health to help them deal with emotional struggles, mental hardships, to make sure that they are mentally healthy in the end. So thank you very much. This has been my presentation. Thank you for listening. Stated in her project, it's always important to know how to identify certain factors that may pose a risk to your mental health and to know where to go if you seek help.